strap yourself in. It's time for Tommy Paradise and DJ with the Run In, the Run In podcast. Hey, hey, what do you say? Episode number 137 of the Run In podcast. Almost as long as Roman Reigns' streak. It is officially our three-year anniversary. We debuted after the la- the 2020 edition of Double or Nothing. I don't know if the dates match up, but we're just calling the show after Double or Nothing, our anniversary. So happy anniversary, DJ. Yeah, happy it's showtime and happy anniversary. What? Like That's craziness. That's crazy. Three years, man. Uh, and we are also the number one wrestling podcast in Angola, baby. We've made it. We have officially made it the number one wrestling podcast in Angola. How was Memorial Day, man? Any big cookouts? Any uh, big parties? You get hammered? Wasted? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> but man, I just needed to relax, though, from, like, I got all this going on. And, like, I can't believe... This like you know this weekend coming up is MJ's graduation from freaking high school. It's crazy. So whoever thought you'd have a kid graduating from high school, right? Crazy. It just shows you how old you are. Yeah. It does. <laughs> it's like, damn, uh, I can't say I'm 18 anymore. We were in Maryland for Memorial Day weekend, and uh, got to meet up with the hot take kid, Phil Gentile. Grab nice. dinner with him on Thursday night. Nice. And then uh, with him, his wife, his kid, and then uh, and my wife and my kid. And then uh, we met up. Uh, he came to one of my kids' baseball games on, I think it was Sunday morning. So awesome okay. experience, though. If you're a, a baseball family and you do the travel baseball thing, sure. highly recommend this Ripken experience in Aberdeen, Maryland. Uh, we went to the, Oh, and we, and we went to the Orioles game. He came to the Orioles game with my kid and his team. Uh, Orioles got smacked. Uh <laughs> By the fucking Texas Rangers of all teams, ten to two. Uh, but we got to see a position player pitch, which is always entertaining. Throwing thirty-two mile an hour sliders, the kids were having a blast with that. The kids ended up on TV. Uh, there was like a a long fly ball hit to the outfield, and they were right in the front row trying to steal that fly ball away from the outfielder. Uh, so it was overall a great experience. A field, one of the fields they played on, was legitimately like a uh, like a. Uh, a uh what, what's the word i'm looking for minor league stadium uh oh, nice. it was very cool very cool it was a it was a uh replica of camden yards they even had like the warehouse in the out in right yeah, field but it's actually okay. a marriott it's very very cool hey. um but it looks just like the warehouse at camden yards uh super cool experience can't yeah. say enough good things so we were talking about it yesterday with our little league teams just saying like if you guys have the opportunity to do this make this happen if you uh if 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 you do the travel baseball thing, it was amazing. Great experience. And uh, now still it's Thursday when we're recording. It's I'm still trying to get back into the swing of life here and caught up on all this wrestling. Um, it's a it, crazy weekend of wrestling, but uh, happy to be home. And Memorial Day official kickoff, I guess unofficial kickoff of summer. Um, and like you said, man, school uh, school's only got about seven more days here. Um, which is unbelievable. School year is almost over. About to, I'm about to have a seventh grader, which is mind blowing. Right. Um, so it's just man, it's like the best time of year. It's school's out. Uh, weather's super nice. Just need all this pollen to go away so I can <laughs> breathe and not have a sore throat and have a good voice every every day. But uh, <laughs> we're getting into it. Getting into the summer here. Uh, the running podcast, by the way, brought to you by Figure Collections. Head over to figurecollections.com slash shop. Use the code RUN10. Save 10% on anything on their site. You can also use uh, figurecollections.com slash store to check out their eBay store. And make sure you check out the Figure Collections database over there at figurecollections.com. All kinds of figures uh, in that database, not just wrestling figures. So check that piece out. You drinking this early in the morning? Talk a lot about <laughs> drinking. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I hung out with a bunch of drinkers on the yeah, so. weekend. But <laughs> yeah, but whenever morning, the any morning we I'm drinking coffee. Like that. You could always <laughs> throw some Baileys in that coffee, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I need to, especially for the more like you know, keep it 
And remember, I'm three hours less than you. So, that's right. It's so yeah, Bailey's here. would not help me <laughs> <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right. Huge week of wrestling here in the in the wild world of uh, of wrestling. Let's get say right that. to it. I about yeah. to say, say that a few times. Man. Right. Uh, let's get right to it, man. We got uh, Double or Nothing, Night of Champions. Let's talk about it all. In the Ring is brought to you by uh, SeatGeek. Head over to SeatGeek.com. Grab yourself some baseball tickets, concert tickets, comedy shows, wrestle at Monday Night Raw coming to Hartford here on Monday night. Thinking about jumping on SeatGeek and using the code RUNNINGPOD to save 20 bucks uh, yeah, yeah. on your first order. So uh, we'll see what happens. But we kind of talked about it a little bit or hinted at it already. But uh, we did mess up last week, by the way. We mentioned uh, that Night of Champions and Double or Nothing were on the same day. Right, right, I, right. I like flipping around Saturday night at the hotel, and I'm like trying to find uh, – I'm trying to find Double or Nothing on the on the streams and stuff and couldn't find anything. So I'm like, wait, did I mess up? Like what what's going on here? And <laughs> I figured out that, yeah. Uh, we did mess up, and that it was uh, it, double or nothing was Sunday. But uh, night, of, we'll start with Night of Champions. Night of Champions was the first show Saturday afternoon. I did not watch live. Uh, I caught up actually when I got home Monday night. I caught up. Uh, what do you think overall of uh, of the pay per view? Well, the premium almost, live event. I'm the sorry. The premium live event. Um, yeah, it was almost like waking up for NFL football for. For us folks over here, <laughs> you know, uh, and again, like, here we go with, like I said, like some, like, I just like the way these crowds come to these shows to have a good time. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like, again, I, like, I think we come, like, I think we're a little spoiled. Like we come and it's like, oh, this attitude sometimes with, that I think we come to shows with and it's like, yeah, you better entertain me kind of thing. And 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 the person I think should win better win. Whereas they're like, you know, they're just they're they're having a ball as as the show is going on. Uh so love the energy. Uh I thought the I thought that I thought it was a good card. I I I was having fun with them. Um yeah. got some surprises, got some like uh you know, finally they kind of I think graduated a level above a, a glorified house show. Um, I think one of those reasons is that now we finally had a match where like a, a legend is in the match and they weren't just in the match just to be there. You know what I mean? <coughs> like, so, it, or shoot DX and all oh, uh, right. I forgot yeah. about that. I yeah. forgot all about that. Yeah. So that match was just, you could tell it was just, he wanted to see those four people, you know? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I I enjoyed the show very much. Yeah, it was good. Uh, I did. I went back, watched the whole thing, enjoyed it. Uh, the bloodline story continues to give us mm -hmm. everything we need and more. Uh, thought we had a title change. Um, okay. I don't really have a whole lot of complaints about the show, man. It was the like you said, man. The crowd was hanging on everything. Um, we've been spoiled with the crowd these last two uh, these last two shows with uh, the Puerto Rico, <laughs> Puerto Rico crowd yeah. and now the uh, the Saudi crowd. Um, very, very, uh, I thought overall good show. Uh, Seth Rollins gets the win over AJ. Uh, we kind of all saw that happening. Uh, then we got Trish Stratus and Becky Lynch, Trish getting the win there. Um, and Zoe. Trish with Zoe at Stark. That's right. Um, making well, her rooting for, her. I'm glad that she got like, she completely deserves to have a spotlight on her that she can go. It's not like, I'm glad here we go. Like now people get to see her. She is fucking jacked. I did not realize. Sometimes, like, because she's dating uh, Braun, uh, not Braun Strowman, Braun Breaker. Mm -hmm. um, and, like, he'll post pictures of them together every once in a while. Like, she doesn't look huge. But then you see her on TV, and she just looks. Next to Braun Breaker, she's not here. That's true. That's a good point. <laughs> Very good point. But she is jacked, man. Um, good for her getting the call up. I think putting her with Trish is a huge uh, a move for her. I think it shows that they really want to do something with her. Right. Um, I was just saying to one of my buddies, though, man, I was watching Raw Monday after, and uh, Trish is obviously a legend, great wrestler. And I don't know if it's just because she's rusty, but man, she is terrible on the mic. Terrible on the mic 
as of right now. Um, hopefully, it kind of comes back to her. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's uh, stories going around that she is officially like back full time here on the roster. Um, I don't think she's gonna be doing house shows or anything like that, but she will be on Raw for uh, the foreseeable future. But so let Tara- me ask you this: so because I have a take on Trisha's mic skill, <laughs> I think Go she's always it. been. I think she's always been average. Like, mm. like name a like a fiery promo, promo that she ever put on that made you want to watch a match. Like it just it doesn't exist. That's like, a good point. I, I think we just like we have this fond memory of her, which again, like her and her and Lita put on some great matches. I'm not gonna take away any of her matches mm-hmm. from the past, but the mic thing has never been it. It has been she comes out, she you know, um, she looks great. So I think back then that's all you like, you know, I think that's what most of us probably remember paid attention to. Yeah. And then now it's okay. We do want to hear like, you know, now we're a little older. So it's like, okay, what do you what do you have to say? Like, right. Say well, something. That's actually a great point. And I'm gonna agree with you that she's never really had been great on the mic or had great mic skills. Um, she's always just been a really good performer. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it's kind of like what that going back to uh what we were talking about in our group chat with the rock is like we have fond memories of the rock but if you think about it he really wasn't around that long compared to some of these other legends and stuff like that so that that nostalgia that fondness that memory that you have maybe you're think put in and we talked about it with steve ozer from uh mattel as well um off the record kind of when we were talking about some other stuff that you ha- sometimes in your mind you have this picture of somebody or you have this thought of somebody being way better than they actually are or way even way better looking than they actually are or, right um to that extent so maybe we are suffering a little bit of that from with trish mm-hmm. so i think i think you uh you nailed that point perfect uh gunther defeats mustafa ali we kind of all saw that coming but glad to see uh mustafa get some uh shine and get some time in the spotlight with this match and then he ended up on uh, NXT on Tuesday, and he did uh, the circuit too. He did the um, the circuit for uh, Islam. Oh, okay. He was there, so that All was right. that's a special like for in case you don't know, like if you're um, Islamic, that is a, a huge thing, like to go to Mecca and, and do the circuit. So gotcha. So yeah, he that. did that during that trip, and happy for him. Um, yeah, very cool to see him getting a little bit of a, a push there. Um, and then ended up on NXT, which I think actually is a good move for him. Um, kind of go down there like Ziggler did, just do some work with some of these younger guys. Sure. Um, give that, you know, there's been a few guys. Um, Jinder Mahal did it. Uh, a few of these guys have gone back and forth a little bit and uh, and kind of help these younger guys out. And it keeps you working. And I don't think it's a terrible thing. No. Um, the biggest surprise, I think, of the night was Asuka. Uh, I think this might be one of the only title changes on one of these Saudi shows, not the only, I, I want to say there was another one that I just cannot think of at the moment. Um, but just one the new title being awarded, if you true. Want to count that. Yeah. Um, so Goldberg didn't win a title over there or did he lose it over there? I can't remember. That's a good, cause Kenny, uh, help us out. Kenny. Yeah, that's good. Cause it almost feels like he either like, lost to the fiend there. Yeah, that's exactly what I was gonna say. I feel or like he beat, beat the fiend there. One of the <laughs> one or the other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then Rhea <laughs> squashed Natty in a minute and ten seconds. Um, that's unreal. But we again we knew that was gonna happen. That's kind of like, hey, let's just throw Natty in here. She's a veteran, let her do her thing. Brock defeats Cody uh on a technical submission officially. Right. Um, and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn defeat the Bloodline, um, and we saw the Bloodline crumble. Any Some thoughts more. on those last three matches? Rhea, uh, Natty, Brock, Cody, and the Bloodline and KO. Well, and, just uh, for my own entertainment, I you know every time I see like somebody get squashed in a, especially on a premium live event, have a, a fun game you can play with yourself is go on Twitter. Oh, I love playing with myself. <laughs> so that's going to be a sound bite. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, go on Twitter, refresh, and then uh, you'll see you'll in net like within within three swipes, you're going to see somebody. Oh, they're they they treat Daddy so bad. 
come and then they'll it'll have the you know Natalia is all elite like you know <laughs> posts like you it, it'll it, it's amazing like you <laughs> like whoever loses is, come to AEW they won't do you like that oh boy yeah so you're just uh, sitting catering for months yeah <laughs> you'll be the like you said you'll be the big announcement for a couple weeks and then yeah so uh yeah so that that's that was hilarious um now. Speaking of IWC, can we can now for those that like just believe everything you hear on dirt sheets after seeing Sami Zayn come out <laughs> and wrestle a main event in Saudi Arabia, can you now say that you don't know anything about anything and just kind of go with the ride here? Because <laughs> I remember that was the thing. Oh, he can't go there because of the, the ba ba ba. Well, there was there was a reason he couldn't go there. I don't know the ins and outs. I know it was something. I saw the story. Uh, afterwards, it was something mm-hmm. to do with he's Arabic, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, somebody's gonna correct me. I believe he's Arabic, and there is something between Saudi and uh, the Arab nation where they weren't getting along. And then, right like a few weeks before this, something happened where they squashed all that. Mm-hmm. So he, he wasn't going over there because of that. That was actually true that he wasn't going over because. Mm-hmm of some political stuff. And it was actually like a concern for his safety. Sure. Um, and, then, and then that got squashed and now he can go over there and is willing right. to go over there. So, well, I mean like, so that last, so the tag team, the, the title defense before this, Oh, they have to lose it. Right. Because, right. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like, stop, just watch. Right. right just stop trying to tell me, you know, um, that's what bothers me. Like, you know, so it's like, here we go. Wrong again. Uh, and then for the Oscar match, like I, like I kind of said in our, in our uh, group chat, I was like, well, every, they got what they wanted. It's like everybody was hell bent on booing. Like, you know, and I saw some, uh, again, like, like, and then there's times on Twitter, you wish you hadn't looked. And it's like, you know, I saw some disgusting uh. <laughs> tweet, like tweets of after she lost. So, so it's just like, you know, that, so that's, I, I don't get people with that one. Um, I think, I think Bianca had an excellent title run Absolutely. and we'll have another. Oh yeah. She's not um, dumb. Yeah. So, and she's an excellent wrestler. Like she's, what, what more do you want? Like she can, she can talk, she can, uh, and she's great in the ring. What do we, I don't understand what the whole hate of her was. I don't either. Um, the whole like so again we're so spoiled so you mean to tell me you didn't you didn't get the result you wanted at wrestlemania so that's a reason to boo and and if you look at some tweets completely disrespect folks like i mean just i don't get it i think it came down to the whole roman disease where like she just wins too much and people were getting annoyed um, champion like you're supposed to win <laughs> like like that's again it's like I, I like to ask people with this like so do you watch regular sports yeah because it's like well, yeah because people hate the patriots and i think she got a little bit of that a little bit of that patriots disease where people just hated her because she kept winning i mean i i understand that in 2023 people hate her for other reasons mm-hmm. um but i think the majority of her no i'm um, sure it's yeah super cena and yeah, exactly. Exactly. And all that. Um, I get that. But it's just like, but it's not like, okay, so with Cena, like, so for like when I was out on Cena, like I'll, I'll say this, like some people have asked me this question before. When I was out on Cena was the Nexus storyline. That was it for me. I was like, okay, this jumped the shark. I'm not, I'm, I'm good. Like you're going to beat a whole faction, like a faction that's beaten everybody that's running roughshod over the company. And you get to beat them by yourself. I'm out. I'm out. Like that yeah. that jumped the shark for me for, for John Cena. So uh so she hadn't done anything like that. She's just winning matches. <laughs> like like she there's no impossible thing that we've seen Bianca do that didn't make any sense in a in a story. So it's just like, so what are we talking about here? Let me ask you this. How much of it goes off of your uh I mean, this is just kind of shooting the shit here. Mm-hmm. How much of it, though, goes off of your fandom for her? Because you are a Bianca fan. So, like, do you think you maybe you're a little more sensitive to it than, you know, maybe somebody else? Well, put it this way. Like, 
I was not a fan of the Honky Tonk Man, for example. Shame on you, man. <laughs> when I was, <laughs> <laughs> I thought he was funny. Like it was damn funny. But I love the Honky Tonk Man. But I was waiting, for, you know. But of course, I was, you know, at that age, I'm waiting for him to lose. Like, yeah, come on, somebody get him, you know. Um, I was the first one jumping up and down when the war when I heard the Warriors music. Start when he's like, just bring anybody out here, and they and I can hear the Warriors music start. I started <laughs> hollering, so but I wasn't hate. I didn't hate him. <laughs> like it wasn't, you know. I was. I hate this guy. Um. So that's what I'm talking about. It's like y'all can't just like, <laughs> you know. It's just like it's got to be a hate for somebody. So that's what is kind of sad. I but, hear. So you. yeah. So it's, so it's not from just the fandom of mine. It is. At least make it make sense. Yeah. That's all. Like, don't tell me, oh, well, again, so I'm just going to kind of paraphrase one of the, like, I mean, she was ugly and she can't wrestle anyway. So don't, like, so you're going to tell me, like, that's the reason? <laughs> that's terrible. Yeah, yeah, that is a terrible take. That sounds like somebody <laughs> living in their mom's basement. <laughs> um, to digress here, uh, Brock and Cody match was decent. Looks like we're going to get another one. Oh, Again, man, they're going to milk this thing until WrestleMania 40. Um, <laughs> Cody is just going to keep going until WrestleMania 40. Why um, not? The guy's over. Why not? Yeah. And then uh, just to talk about the, the tag team match, man, we knew it was coming at some point, the crumble of the bloodline. Yes. But, man, the Usos are so <laughs> over. They This might be a debate for uh, a later show, but I, and we might have touched on it mm -hmm. in one of our 136 episodes before this. But are they are very quickly climbing that ladder of if they're not there already of the greatest tag team of all time because sure. even like the work they're just putting in now it's like they've come so far from those guys with the with the shiny shorts slapping their legs all the time um, to where they are now is just incredible and the storyline just keeps on going. So put this is so anybody that disagrees with you, I will ask them this question. Name a tag team that they had a program with that came away worse. Yeah. Than when they started a program with the Usos. That's true. That and I'll true. even go back to the big, like, bit, like white meat baby face for Usos. The ones wearing the shiny shorts yeah. and yeah, the towels yeah. in their back pocket. Yeah. And yeah. So from stuff. the beginning, name a tag team <laughs> that came away worse. Claudia or uh, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd because Tyson That's from King. injury. Yeah, no, I know. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> which, um, hey, we still remember them. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, because I, I thought that. that I thought they were a good tag team. Yeah, I liked how they used to come out with the bows uh, or the um, beats, beats. Uh, headphones and stuff. Like, I was like, "That's dope." But um, um, yeah, man, it's uh, it's crazy. It's uh, uh, a there was a great pay per view overall. Our premium live event. I cannot get used to saying that. I know it's kind of tough, but yeah. <laughs> overall, all uh, Rollins, the new champ, came out Monday night, did his thing. Um, interested to see where that, that goes. Title. What's that? I really like that title. I'm sorry. Uh, you can find that at WrestleMania know. next year. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um. Yeah. It's just overall, man. I thought it was a great pay per view. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it, and that brings us over to Double or Nothing, which kind of ah. – so I'll give – I'm not going to give – take a deep breath on that. Yeah, I'm not going to give Night of Champions a 10. There was still some stuff, but it was like a solid eight and a half, right? Yeah, I can go I can go eight. Yeah, I can go eight for, for uh, Night of Champions. And then we get to Double or Nothing, and I'm excited because AEW, I feel like, always delivers on their pay-per-views. I feel like pay-per-views is one of the things that they do very strongly. Mm -hmm. They're all, even though there's a thousand matches on them, mm -hmm. they're all – like you always – I feel like we – I always end an AEW pay-per-view feeling like, all right, I hope they build on this. Mm -hmm. This one, I did not feel that way. This one, I felt like dragged on. I felt like the crowd was uh, lack, like not Man. into it. Man, I just I didn't get that same vibe that I got from. I mean, there were some good matches. Um, even one of my buddies, who's a huge AEW guy, mm -hmm. um, uh, he I mean he likes both companies. He's not one or the other. But even he was like, "Man, this is not up to their usual, you know, standards, if you will." Mm -hmm. um, 
again, 11 matches. And it started out bad with the unsanctioned match with, between Adam Cole and uh, Jericho. Mm-hmm. It was just such a weird, I just felt like everything in that match felt wrong, uh, felt off. Mm-hmm. Um, the battle Royal felt off. It was just, there was a lot of things, man. The only thing, the first half of the show, I would say the only thing I really enjoyed was Aubrey Edwards getting hit over the head with a guitar. <laughs> Because I am not a Aubrey Edwards I, fan. I'll, I'll admit I did pop for that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, she's becoming. Because I guess it's we'd rather her admit that. Yeah, I kind of want to be a star referee. Yeah, Just admit it. Like, stops. Oh, I, no, the whole I don't want any attention. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. I, and it's all right. And it's all right. Just say, hey, I want to be a star referee, and we would. Everybody, okay, right? Just that's own your it. Gimmick is that you're a star referee, and we go with it, right? Just own that shit. Um, the uh, four pillars match I thought was really good. I like the way that uh, mm-hmm. I like the way that MJF won. Mm-hmm. Chris Statlander coming back. <clears throat> She's wrestled at Blitzkrieg here locally a bunch of times, so I was I was excited to see her back. Nice. Um, I thought the the uh, open rule open house rules six man tag match was decent. Even Wardlow and Christian Cage was good. Um, and but the <clears throat> one match I really was like, what are we doing here? Is the anarchy in the arena match? It just mm. seemed rushed. It seemed like it was all over, not pun intended, but it seemed like it was all over the place. Um, just and I don't know why that match was last. Like, why not have the uh, like, did the elite make it last? Were they like, Probably. we're not, we're, we're going on last? Like, why wasn't MJF, Sammy, Darby Allen, and Jungle Boy last? Because they were trying to. I think, in my opinion, they were trying to get back, if you remember, during the pandemic. Um, so they had the stadium match, and yep. that one was last. And I think they were trying to recapture that. And it's like, well, now we're a live crowd. So, you know, we're not sitting at home watching this anymore. So so that should not be the last match, okay? Yeah. Yeah. And I do have the, the feeling that the elite was like, yeah, we're going last. Um Hey, so if some folks can feel like Vince changes stuff, I can. Th- I think I I have the right to say I think the elite do stuff. So yep. <laughs> okay. So um, yeah. So the recap. So my recap. Uh, like you said, like I even saw people with video that were there, and you could see how dead the crowd was. Mm-hmm. Okay, and this is like during. Uh, like one of the videos was during the entrance of uh, of uh, what's her the the she just the Jade. It was Jade's entrance. Nobody was doing. They were. It was dead quiet. Yeah, <laughs> it was dead quiet while she's doing that whole entrance. One, um, thing, mm-hmm. one thing I don't like is when people post the pictures of the crowd and trying to say like, "Oh, oh the crowd crowd's yeah. half full, crowd's right. half empty, whatever." Don't do that because we don't know when you took that picture. It could have been before, like when you were in your seats. Um, it could have been, you know, in, I, I don't know if they Sometimes do it. Sometimes you can see but, the match. Yeah, but it did seem like AEW. Like I, I watched, I rewatched this yesterday, mm-hmm. and it definitely seemed like they were trying to not show the hard cam. hard cam side, which, and people will say, oh, well, even in WWE, that they don't sell tickets on that side. That's false. They do. Um, right. it's just we not just at WrestleMania immediately and... around the camera is yeah. where they <laughs> yeah. don't sell them. Um, but it just, I don't, I hate that argument. I'm like, just let, let it be like, don't show us that because if you look at where they were showing, it did look full, whether they were giving out free tickets or not, it mm-hmm. just seemed like, which was another rumor, but it just seems like, it just seemed like that crowd was dead. And I know there's been a lot of talk about taking double or nothing out of Vegas for next year. Uh, I think they have to do it. You can still call it double or nothing. You can still have a casino theme. Do it in Atlantic City. Do it in, uh, I mean, I don't know much about Biloxi, Mississippi. I know there's casinos there. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, there's casinos everywhere at this point. Like, let's do it at another casino arena um, if you want to keep that casino vibe going. But, like, you can even have it somewhere where there isn't a casino and keep the casino vibe going. You know what I'm saying? Um it's just, I think it's time to pull it out of Vegas, especially after this uh, this event. Well, well, this is here's my theory. Um, I think it's booking. Uh, so it's it's like so the pre, like you know so one of the debates that all of these shows, have, all of these podcasts, and all of the, all of us wrestlers, wrestling fans have 
is storytelling over work rate, mm. right? So everybody that keeps arguing work rate, why is it that it's only once in a while that there's a match where there wasn't a whole lot of build up to it, and then they have this great match, and then people talk about it for a couple of weeks, right? But that's my point. Yeah, it's like so. Okay, you guys had a match that everybody talks about for a couple of weeks, but when there's a storyline, so here we are. It's 2023, and I can still bring up the uh, the mega powers collide. Yep. And I, that's all I need to say. And then this whole stream of stuff, uh, consciousness is going to come across your mind if you know the story. And you don't even like it, it's not even that much with the match, is it? Like it's it's like most of the stuff that happened leading up to the match. So that's what we're talking about. That's yeah. what makes the crowd like be involved in the match. It does like so all of this stuff. Like I love you, young younger generation. Okay, <laughs> I love you, Gen Z. I love you, millennials, but. You guys want to, it it seems like the theme of your generation is that you guys think you can skip things. Like, let's skip the hard part and just get to, oh, you don't need a storyline. Just get people that can work in the ring. Okay. So, so Tony Khan is doing that. Tony Khan is giving you every quote dream match that you have thought of so far. He just gives it to you. Like no story. No, like he just throws them in the ring. That works for so long, as you can see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, here we are. You've gotten everything that you could possibly want in a match. Like with these, quote, dream matches, there's no stories. So why should I be? So, so again, we we know now. Like, we, we've we seen behind the curtain. We already know that this is a sport that is orchestrated. And, you know, we're watching. So it's basically a piece of art. Like, we're we're watching guys do art. It, live in front of us we know it's not real right so with no story why should i care right it's not real so why should i care so that's the problem like that's what you guys have to see so that's what that's what the issue is i don't you can have this anywhere you want i, I think you know and i hear you like it's probably been in vegas too many times and they're just hey we're used to the nostalgia that this this premium live event is going to be here can you have nostalgia after four years or whatever it is? <laughs> there you go. Yeah. There you now you see it. So I mean, how do you think Madison Square Garden gets full every time WWE does anything? It's because they've seen all those stories unfold in front of their face every time yeah. they go to, to Madison Square Garden. It's true. You need stories. You need to build the characters. It it like they can be professional wrestlers too. Like you can, it's a mix. Like, yeah, when they get in the ring, go ahead and do their, your spots and everything you want to do. But there's sh- like, yes, you need baby faces and heels. I, I've had people tell me that too. Oh, why do we even need that? Cause again, why would I care? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, you guys booed bond uh, Don Callis out of the uh, arena because you are, you are invested in his character now. Right. You don't like him, and that's great. Like that's what he wants you to do. Like he, he's a heel. He wants you to boo him. So yeah, you need all like this form of entertainment has been around for over a hundred years. Mm-hmm. You're not gonna outthink something that lasts that long. Okay, you need all of the parts to it to continue to work. Don Callis getting that Dominic Mysterio heat. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did not watch Dynamite this week, so I can't comment on it. But uh, recap, just recapping Double or Nothing. Like mm-hmm. I said, man, it could have been a little bit better, um, but we still had a huge weekend of wrestling. And I don't want to continue on and not mention NXT Battleground. I did not man. watch it, but I, I have heard that it is it was an. You said you did. I did. All right. Yeah, I heard it was an amazing show. You know. Every like I've even seen in our own like on, on our Facebook group. Yep. That like I've seen people, oh, I haven't watched ever since they changed it to 2.0. Right. Yeah, you need to drop that now. Yeah. Time to um, drop that. Like it, it like dude, drop that. Things change. It's okay for things to change. Okay. Everything is never going to stay the same. Every time something changes and you run off somewhere, you like you go have a fit about it. You're going to, you know, this is not going to work out for you. Okay. Right. Watch the show. 
right now. You can tell HBK just has complete control. Like he's just he's writing it all. It is produced by by a, a wrestling mind. They are putting on great matches. Um, and I think you're not like you know just to, just to not watch because they changed they put 2.0 on it, it. You're not you're doing a disservice. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, I, I am going to go back and watch this, but Carmelo Hayes, uh, the new, or no, he's been champion. I'm sorry. Yeah, and uh, still. Carmelo Hayes is, and still champ. Um, I've heard nothing but good things. Just going back to my buddy, who's a AEW fan. He actually texted me saying have, and, and one of my other buddies were on a group chat. He's like, Hey, have you either one of you watched this NXT show? I heard it's amazing. Um, I want to go back and watch. It's only six matches. Uh, what is it like two hours? Maybe. Um, yeah. if there's only six matches, but I just wanted to mention that it was a, a, a pretty good show. Um, let us know what you think. Chad Miller, a uh, friend of our friend of the show, uh, one of our biggest fans, if not our biggest fan, uh, he put in the fi- Facebook group that he was enjoying battleground more than he was enjoying uh double or nothing. So there was, there's a picture of somebody in the crowd of double or nothing with well, yeah. on his phone. Yeah, and people I, getting mad at him. I'm like, dude, that's the that's AEW's job. You need to you need to make me want to put my phone down while I'm at your event. Right, hundred percent. And that's uh, that was one of my winners and losers. Uh, that was my losers. The people okay. getting upset about that kind of stuff, where it's like, man, just enjoy wrestling. If this guy wants to have, I've done that. I was hanging out with parents during this weekend. <laughs> where, I mean, again, I'm not at an event, but we had the Celtics game on on the TV. Mm-hmm. and uh game six not game seven and then ah, ah. i had the nhl game on on my phone like mm-hmm. people do this all the time this is the world we live in right now right and if somebody wants to do that if they want to spend their money i agree with you 100 percent. by the way saying that that's AEW's job to yep. make that person say oh fuck this i'm i'm into what i'm watching here i think right. that just speaks to what you were watching at double or nothing where it's like oh man i'm gonna check in on this nxt event Yep. It's like, man, I've been at baseball games and I'll I'll click over on my phone to my Fubo app and pull up something. I'm not watching like Seinfeld or Ted Lasso. I'm right. watching a sporting event at a sporting event to see what's going on. T-Mobile, so especially, you get free MLB TV. Right. Especially so. with something big like that where you know it's a, a big event, a premium live event. Like the, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. We'll get into that, though. Yep. Uh, yep. But uh, that wraps up the pay-per-view or premium live events for this week. Just going through our picks, uh, we both did pretty good here. Uh, Night of Champions, um, I picked Trish. You picked Becky. That's one for me. We both picked Rhea. That's two for each. I picked Bianca Belair. You picked Asuka. That's two for you. We both picked Gunther. That's two for both of us. We both picked KO and Sammy. It's two for both of us. Uh, that We both picked Cody. That's none for yeah. either one of us. <laughs> and then uh, we both picked Seth. So it's. It ended up being 10 to 9 for Night of Champions for you. And then Double or Nothing, uh, we both picked Cole. We both picked Cardi Party. We both picked Ty of Valkyrie. Uh, I picked the Elite. You picked uh, Blackpool Combat Club. That's one point for you. We both picked Tony Storm. That's two points for us. We both picked Wardlow. Both picked FTR. Both picked MJF. Uh, so that was 11 to 10 me. Uh, so it ended up being a tie, 20 to 20, <laughs> when it's all said and done. So you're still champ, bro. Still champ uh, for now. Um, luckily, we've got money in the bank coming up here uh, July 1st. So money in the bank qualifying matches have come or are starting, I should say. Yeah, that's going to be good. This I like money in the bank is one of my favorite shows. Oh, yeah. I've been to two of them. I love it. I love it. Um, and it's going to be in the UK. So another early ish start time, I believe. Uh, and you know they did. You, I mean, I do have to giggle a little bit that you know this is in the UK because <laughs> because of the Wembley show. I don't know. I feel like they planned it before. I mean, this is July. Wembley's in what the end of August or September? Something like a, that? yeah, somewhere in August. Yeah. Um, but uh, I mean, you could be right. You could be right. Right. Uh, so far, Which I think it's fun. Like, hey, UK, UK, like wrestling. Let them. That's let right. Some shows. That's right. <laughs> Uh, Ricochet and Shinsuke are the only ones who have qualified so far. Um, and then uh, no women have qualified yet for the uh, women's money in the bank. But uh, I think we'll see that tomorrow uh, tomorrow night. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. I know uh, Zelina is taking on Lacey Evans uh, yeah, on Zelina SmackDown in the match in the Money in the Bank match. Yeah, I don't think I think Lacey Evans is now becoming a uh, a jobber, um, which is too bad because she should be uh, she should be kicking ass. She's I like her gimmick. But, I do too. Um, I liked her original gimmick where she came out as like the uh, the pinup girl from the fifties right. and sixties. Like I liked that. Um, they should bring that back with the she had the money shooting thing. Actually, speaking of uh, Money in the Bank, I saw her at one of the Money in the Banks when, when Bailey won it. So um, we did get a announcement on AEW that Punk CM Punk will be on Collision. There is still 17 days before this debuts, so a lot could still happen in the two weeks plus before uh, that show makes its debut. But That's funny. I, I said, I go, I t- that same group text I was telling you guys about before, I was like, hey, uh, Punk officially confirmed. And one of my buddies was like, yeah, well, it's in Chicago. And I was like, yeah, but I was still skeptical, even though they announced that it was going to be in Chicago. I still had my doubts that he either same. wasn't going to show, something was going to happen. Um, do you think this is a good move? Well, and it also looks like there's going to be a brand split, like from the okay, the dirt sheets here. I did not know that. Um, so that's going to be interesting because I want to see how I want I want to see how they like people that are just faithful to AEW how that's going to work because mm-hmm. because we were talking about attendance here and. So for the weekly shows, attendance has really been hurting. Like let's yeah. just let's just call it what it is, and and to split now. Like so now you're gonna have people that know. Okay, on this show I'm only gonna see you know X Y and Z, and on this show I'm only gonna see X Y and Z. Are people gonna? And I know some of the times that they film all of these on the same day. Uh, are people gonna stay? Like so when you know. <laughs> I, I guess if you have Collision second, then yeah, people are going to stay because they want to see CM Punk. Uh, at least some like I want to talk about that announcement real quick. So because I watched Dynamite, um, the crowd was kind of half and half. Like you had, yeah, you had your people wearing, you know, that were wearing CM Punk shirts, and they started a CM Punk chant. But then there were some boos, yeah, in that. So it was very partisan crowd. Like I don't. You know, so may like you know maybe having heat on both sides will help ratings because you know like Muhammad Ali said, people will pay to see you win or lose, right? Yep. Um, but uh, let's see what happens. Like, and then how long does Punk? Like, so again, my where I question Punk is his physical. Like, I I don't know how his body is going to hold up. Yeah, I think it's a good move for like getting people to tune in or show up. Mm -hmm. I think in the long run, I don't think it's going to be a great move. I think he's going to throw a hissy fit again, or he's going to look really bad in the ring. Um, Hopefully he's training. I I don't know. Obviously don't know if he is or not, Um, but I would assume he is, but man, I just hope that uh, I hope this goes way better than the last time in all aspects, right? You know, behind the scenes in the ring, et cetera. I hope this just I want this to succeed. I I think it's good for wrestling. I think that it's good for AEW for them to have that, you know, headliner, the game changer, if you will. Um, mm-hmm. it's gonna get people to tune in. Um, just don't throw that hissy fit. <laughs> right. I do just just wrestle. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> just go uh, with whatever the plan is and Jeez, Arch, <laughs> you don't Arch. have to be champion the whole time. It's just not necessary. <laughs> You, get, uh, you got your ice cream bar. Just come on. Ex- yeah, exactly. Exactly. Our uh, tribal chief celebrated 1,000 days of being champ. I tried to Google uh, like what has happened in the last 3,000 days or 1,000 days mm-hmm. uh, since he's become champ. There wasn't a whole lot of stuff that came up, unfortunately. Like it, It's not an easy thing to Google, which I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, apparently there's like a medical thing called the, the, the last – 1000 days Mm -hmm. um but anyway uh it was back in 2020 so we know you know there was a pandemic and it ended since then um lots of different champions for sports uh (laughs) but thousand days man and it looks like he is uh not giving it up anytime soon um we just wanted to acknowledge our uh, our tribal chief sure um and then uh the, the the big news of the week 
well, not big news. I don't know why I said that, but some news of the week. <laughs> Alexa Bliss and Ty Conti, both pregnant. I don't like the way Sammy and Ty announced it, but that's not my decision to make. It's theirs. Also, uh, kind of related, uh, Corey Graves and Carmella did their uh, gender reveal, and they are having a boy. All right. So, lots of pregnancy news. Um, and I, I didn't mind that. Like, that's it kind of brought back the old school Sammy with the signs. Uh, yeah, I get that. Then uh, Tony Schiavone mentioned that. Yeah. So um, I, I didn't mind it. But I just, I don't know. Keep it, keep that in real life separate. I think. I don't know. I mean, everybody <laughs> knows they're married anyway, but whatever. What do I know? What do I know? <laughs> Time to move on to winners and losers of the week. It's brought to you by JJ Figures dot com make sure you subscribe on our patreon you'll get yourself a little exclusive discount code to jjfigures.com you get 15 percent while everybody else is getting 10 percent uh my winner is wrestling fans because it was a jam-packed weekend of wrestling oh, yeah. i am still not all caught up uh just halfway about halfway through raw um and then uh still have to catch up on dynamite did not like i said i gotta watch that nxt pay-per-view uh i did not watch uh because uh whatchamacallit debuted this week too uh, dark side of the ring dark side, yep. uh, i haven't been able to watch any of that stuff uh just been catching up on life uh and and real life getting in the way of course as well so um <laughs> of course man it's just uh so i think we all won again just enjoy wrestling um and that brings that brings me to my losers of the week it's the people complaining um (laughs) i saw somewhere too like people were complaining about like how the crowd was mic'd for uh double or nothing and it's just like come on man like why are we nitpicking here aren't they always mic'd every yeah but it was the way they were mic'd i guess so it made the crowd sound even worse than what it actually was but it's like man are we really like complaining about all, are we really nitpicking that bad here uh, with with everything? Just enjoy wrestling. Right. If you enjoyed it, who gives a fuck what the crowd is saying or doing? Like, if you enjoyed it, who cares? Don't right. bitch and complain about somebody watching something else or, a, God forbid, another wrestling program. <laughs> Dude, it's it's that reasons like that, it's reasons like that though. Like why when I went to the Ring of Honor show in California. I asked my butt. I'm like, uh, is it okay to wear a WWF shirt? Like an old school WWF. Like, right. Are people going to give me a hard time because it's ring of honor and AEW if I wear a WWE shirt? Um, so I ended up going with like a Legion of doom shirt because I was like, I don't want people yeah, fucking like bothering I, me. Yeah. I've seen like the classic macho man shirts and hot yeah. rod shirts and the AEW crowd. So it seems, seems like head, right. people's heads will explode. If you wear a, uh, if you wear a, a Roman Reigns shirt, there. I was about to say wear a Roman Reigns shirt. That'll <laughs> that'll do it. <laughs> wear a Ronda um, Rousey shirt. Who do you got for winners and losers? <laughs> uh, Carmelo Hayes for my winner. Um, like I said, go watch it uh, if you haven't. Um, great match. It's a great. I think it was a also a great scent. Like I should have also put Braun on there mm-hmm. um, because I think it was a. Uh, it felt like a send off for him. Um, so, so I think we'll be seeing him soon on either Monday or, or Friday, mm. um, including there's a couple other wrestlers too. It felt like, or I think there's a tag team. I feel like that it felt like we'll be Is seeing it, them. Uh, I cannot think of their names and I don't have the, uh, right. I, I have up anymore. Pretty yeah. deadly. Pretty deadly. Yeah. Is that I think so. Thinking of? I yeah. think so. Yep. Um, which they deserve it if, if that's what's happening. Yep. Um, so yeah, and then HB's still got to keep going, right? He's still got to, <laughs> he's still okay. I got to, you know, they keep calling up people. I got, <laughs> I got to build some more people. So, uh, but I think he kind of likes. I, I, I have the feeling he likes his job. Um, but and then my loser was, um, can can we stop putting Soraya and Britt Baker in the ring together now? You love Britt Baker, Jesus. You love Britt Baker. She's your favorite. Of course she is. Um, <laughs> When she's talking, yeah, <laughs> like she's one of the best. Talk- like I think she should be a manager. Um, even wow. in, in the entrance, like go like when you watch the the show, go watch like they had a mixed tag match, right? Go and then go watch uh, Adam Cole's entrance. 
and then imagine that that Britt Baker is his manager. It made more sense to me than and then like so watch that and then watch what happens every time her and Soraya are in the ring. Mm. I th- and it's both of them. Like, but I, I think Soraya knows that she, she knows what she can do and what she can't do, and right. everything slows down to a crawl. Okay, and I I think what it is is that Britt Baker is not athletic. Mm. She's not. Uh, athletic. It's a hot take. She's Very in good take. shape. There's a difference. Like you can be in good oh, yeah. shape, okay, but being athletic is is that's a that's like kind of gift like that's a gift right and okay and she she's not athletic mm. i think that's what it is and then you had two people that you need to slow down the match for be in the ring and wrestle each other and it looks bad that's all i'm saying i think she should be a manager <laughs> i think she's way better as a manager i just think there's a good percentage of wrestlers in w- uh, AEW mm-hmm. that need practice and they don't have so, not right now. They don't have something like the house shows or the performance center to like work on that. They're literally doing it all on TV. And I think they need, I think they, need, especially like Soraya is coming back mm-hmm. from injury, like a pretty serious injury. Obviously, Britt Baker's always hurt, it seems like. So I feel like they just need some kind of practice facility or performance center. Well, and from what I'm told though, and then, you know, so this is, I'm just going to say from, I'm not going to say this as a certainty as some people do. So from what I'm told and so what I think is happening, it just seems like, so it's also like, so you have Tony letting them run the company. So you have some people that one thing that they were unhappy about in WWE is that they make you work so hard. Mm, They're like, no, much, but, yep. yeah, it's like, by the time you get to the ring, I want this timing down. Like I should, there, there shouldn't be like a bunch of people waiting for you to jump over the top rope for thirty seconds. Yeah, right, that's too long. This should, the timing should be right. Yeah, so go work on it. I think that's something that they did not like. And then now, and then so when you watch, like, so again, one of my complaints of an AEW show is that you can have a guy sitting on the top rope, and I've seen like, and I'm not over exaggerating. You can go look this up. For a minute and a half, waiting mm-hmm. for the waiting for the spot. Yeah. Okay. You can have referees holding a, a ladder. Right. Okay. And I can hear the guy yelling, no, I don't want him to fall and break his neck. <laughs> I'm saying that we've seen it done. Like mm-hmm. all, all you had to do was have a taller ladder and you would not have had to have a bunch of guys holding the ladder for him. Okay. So, <laughs> so it, it's simple shit. Uh, yeah, if you think about it, like Brit, if she was in WWE, she'd be working and would not have time to continue to be a dentist. Like, I don't think that's a terrible thing. Like Mm -hmm. what you still, if you're going to be a professional wrestler or professional dentist, both of those take an exceptional amount of time of your time. Uh You need to figure out what you got to pick one, I think eventually. Right. right? And then most of them do shows still like they're still doing Indie How, shows, right? Indie shows, right? And and then Indie. there is, I just think an indie like so entertaining hundreds of people. There are different things you need to do to entertain thousands and millions of people right. for the thousands in attendance and the millions watching around the world. I think that's a different thing that you have to do to entertain that size of a crowd. That sounds familiar. Where'd you come up with that saying? That sounds very, very familiar. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so i think they they're not realizing that and then it's like i don't want you to tell me what to do and then they go out like and like i said before like a lot of the wwe people or ex wwe people are still doing what they were doing they just don't want to be told to do it yeah um and that brings us to buy sell i have nothing for buy sell this week uh what do you got um i would just watch like you know, I like to scroll through to see to see if I can find one. And then so I saw that, like, you know, love or hate or Ronda Rousey. Hate. Um, <laughs> I'm just yeah, I know. But uh, but has a point. I it, like, let's see if you think she has a point here. Um, so they just won the her and, and Shayna just won the tag team titles. And then I'm going to paraphrase because it was like a long thing. But she was saying, OK, I want to defend this title every week 
twice a week if you want me to. I'll go to both shows. The problem is that there's not a big, like the roster is not really equipped to have like good tag, like women's tag matches because mm-hmm. there's just like A, not enough women, B, not enough teams that have like a story to their team and like that are built as a team. Like look at who they even beat. They were really just kind of put together. Um, so I think she has a, like, do you buy sell that? I think she has a point here. Um, I think that they did, like you said, I think they, they have put just like these wrestlers together. I don't think that's a terrible thing. Um, I think it's giving people, uh, like, like Raquel Gonzalez or Rodriguez and Shotzi Blackheart this week, I mm-hmm. thought was a different tag team, but I thought they made it work. I thought it was fun. Um, I didn't think it was the worst thing in the world. Um, but these people are also getting TV time. But then they're also, and I feel like they are building, like you've got Chelsea Green and Sonya Deville becoming a tag team. They've been a tag team since before WrestleMania. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, the only reason Raquel is with Shotzi is because uh, Liv Morgan got hurt. Yeah, You've got damage mm-hmm. control. Um, I think they have done a better job lately. It's of, been better mm-hmm. of building, uh, of building the t- the the team. Yeah, and then so now I think all you really need are, are like you're saying. So I I would say like maybe a couple more, and then build some like build the characters. Like build the like. Why should I care about this tag team? You know, don't just give them a cute name. Just like, okay, like, you know, like, so we already had that with damage control. Like yep. damage control, we, you have a feeling one way or other for damage control. Yeah. As you should. Like they've been in some good stories. Um, So now keep going. Like, like you know, so I, I, I think it's just uh, you for Triple H. It's like, okay, you already have Paul. Paul Heyman is basically running the bloodline story. So you're you're handled there. Let them do what they do. Let you know, let that one cook, and then now start putting some other stuff on on the grill here. Um, and I think that's all that's really left. Yeah. And and but but I do agree, like, don't let the so don't let the women like I think her whole point is don't let the women's tag team title just become this this thing on the that nobody thinks of anything of like like uh let's have it be fighting champions and and stories going along with the the women's tag title yeah and i think they're i think they're kind of working towards that kind of like what we were just saying Mm -hmm. um in a way but uh that's it oh by the way buy sell brought to you by phil gentile's new book i got it right Mm -hmm. here we'll talk about it in weekly purchases um, it is the official guide to America's toy stores by Phil Gentile available on Amazon now. And we got more stuff to talk about, including how you can win a copy of that for free in housekeeping. Housekeeping. No, thank you. Sleeping. Come back in an hour. Housekeeping, you want towels? I want towels. Need sleepy. Housekeeping, you want men for pillow? Please go away. Let me sleep for the love of God. Housekeeping, you want me to jerk you off? Housekeeping is brought to you by Homage. Head on over to runinpod.com. Use our affiliate link under the deals section and buy a whole bunch of stuff. They've got Father's Day tees, which is right around the corner. They've got a whole bunch of new NFL stuff, a whole bunch of new MLB stuff. Um, The Father's Day shirts are fire. Uh, The MLB, they've got some new retro MLB logos, um, which are very cool. Some new NFL stuff to get you ready. Long sleeves included uh, to get you ready for the season because the NFL will be here before we know it. So go check it out. Um, and if you've never bought anything from them before, you can use the code RUNINPOD for 15% off your first order. Uh, this week, we've got a giveaway. It is a copy of a brand, uh, Phil Gentile's brand new book. We just talked about it a little bit. Uh, the Official Guide to America's Toy Stores. Uh, spoiler alert, this is one of my weekly purchases. It showed up in the mail uh, while I was in Maryland. I don't know why Phil didn't just give it to me while I was in Maryland, but whatever. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, basically what it is is every page or multiple pages has 
the list of every toy store uh in the state so uh it's uh it's it's amazing uh this book is fantastic take it with you on vacation um we are going to uh oh i just finally read the uh introduction i have not uh man no thanks to the run-in podcast what a piece of shit i'm just kidding i'm just kidding uh (laughs) but definitely check it out uh every toy store uh just about in america is listed uh very cool i know he's put a ton of work into it um so make sure you guys check it out uh you can buy it on amazon right now um it's only like 11 dollars too and we're going to give away a copy that's this week's uh giveaway head over to our instagram page uh tag three friends in the comments share it to your stories make sure you're following us and the fig cave over at uh over at instagram and uh, we'll pick a winner on next week's show um so check that out over there on instagram uh, patreon.com slash the run in pod. We do have a Patreon. Make sure you sign up to your start at just a dollar a month. You get access to the Fig K Facebook group, which has over 500 members buying and selling trading toys um, for you. So if you're having a hard time finding something, uh, all you got to do is head on over to the Fig K Facebook group and uh, and and see if somebody can grab it for you. I'm looking for a couple of things coming up for an autograph signing, so I got a post in there. Um, <laughs> looking for some Kurt Angle and Godfather figures coming up. Um, One dollar a month, uh, it gets you in there. Five dollars a month, you get a few few extras, and then uh, ten dollars a month gets you a lot of extras. So go check it out over at Patreon.com/slash Run In Pod. And one thing we do every month over on Patreon is we give away something for our Patreon members. One dollar a month, get to one entry. Uh, five dollars a month gets you two, and ten dollars a month gets you three. Uh, we're gonna give away May's giveaway. Uh, if you're listening to this early on Patreon on Thursday, uh, we're gonna give away do the giveaway on Friday. So pay attention if you're in the FK Facebook group or over on Patreon. Um, it's gonna be one item from our merch shop of your choice and an elite. But then we've got June's giveaway. It is a four pack of elites, or I'm sorry, a four pack even better, a four pack of ultimates oh. from Wrestling Collector Shop. And it's got Andre the Giant, Shawn Michaels, the uh, the first Shawn Michaels Ultimate. It's got Goldberg, the Amazon exclusive Goldberg, and it's got uh, the latest Ultimate Warrior, the WrestleMania 7 Ultimate Warrior. Um, all you got to do is be a Patreon member through June, and you will be into the drawing for that. And again, uh, $1 a month gets you one entry, $5 gets you two, $10 gets you three. And then if you make a purchase on any of our sponsors, Homage, Seat Geek, Wrestling Collector Shop, uh, Figure Collections, try not to forget anybody, um, you will get an extra entry uh, if you send us a screenshot of your orders. So each order number will get you an extra entry. So make sure you do that. Um, and we've got a new discount code for Patreon. It's only at uh, jjfigures.com. 15% off anything on their site uh july 9th blitzkrieg pro is back in enfield connecticut is the biggest show of the year for them make sure you check that out and uh, if you want to buy some running pod merch head over to merch.runninpod.com or uh just check out runninpod.com that's got everything you need to follow us on youtube twitter instagram etc and uh, make sure you like subscribe and write a review over on apple podcasts if you have not already that is it for housekeeping Let's do some Falls Count. Falls Count Anywhere here. Falls Count Anywhere. They are going everywhere. Look at this. This is Falls Count Anywhere. Falls Count Anywhere is brought to you by Wrestling Collector Shop. You guys can use the code RON10 for 10% off any order. Or if you spend 50 bucks, you can use the code run in for free shipping uh they've got elite 104 up for pre-order that is uh solo sokoa i know everybody wants him Mm -hmm. uh rick steiner braun breaker the chase in the regular dakota kai aj styles and drew mcintyre that's the whole wave all up for pre-order if you're listening to this thursday uh, you've still got some time. 
uh, I believe even on Friday, you might have a little bit of time. They are doing 25% off any pre-orders. All you got to do is use the code June pre-order and you'll get 25% off. They also dropped the uh, best of ultimate edition series two, which is the original ultimate warrior and stone cold Steve Austin. You can get 25% off those using the, um, using the, that same code June pre-order is the, uh, the code. How do you feel about these ultimate editions getting re-released? I'm okay with it. Um, like I think we talked about it before. Like I know there's going to be some folks that they're looking more at what a figure is going to be worth later, or maybe even in the immediate present, they're not going to be happy about it. Uh, but I think this is like for the bigger picture. This is about everybody that wanting that wants a figure being able to get one. Like, exactly. So, so that's why I don't mind the re-releases because it's like, yeah, there's some people that that missed something, and because you do have some folks that will buy, you know, <laughs> all of them, and and then want to jack up the price, and yep, you know, so hey, those days, I, I think those days are coming to an look, end. Look like they're coming to an end. I think there's still the the collectability. Um, that was one person's argument was like, oh, it ruins the collectability. I see that to an extent, but at the same time, it's like you still have like these Mattel creations like uh, yeah. Cody Rhodes, Logan Paul. Um, <laughs> you still have an element of collectability with certain figures. Right. I am for this uh, because I did sell my Ultimate Warrior for $115 last year, and then I may or may not have rebought it during this sale. So um, I, I, for one, feel like I sold at the right time, and now they're re-releasing everything. More on that in weekly purchases as well. Um, but I, I get why I get both sides. I get why people are upset, but I also get like Mattel's like, we see how much these are going for on the secondary market. Mm -hmm. Let's get our cut. And those early, uh, those early ultimates, ultimate warrior series one, um, Bret Hart, triple H, uh, the Shinsuke, the Finn Balor, like those are super hard to find in the beginning. Like nobody really knew what to expect from this ultimate line. Now it's flourishing. So I think, hey, yeah, why not, you know, re-release these for people who may not have been able to get them back in the day. So I don't hate it. I don't hate it, to be honest with you. But um, I get I get why people do hate it. So um, <laughs> I, I get it. I'm, I get it. Uh, we did see some new AEW figures released. Um, we'll go through these quick uh, for more in-depth figure uh, news. Make sure you check out the fig cave. But one of the first things we saw was Dan Housen and hook um, as a two pack. It's an Amazon two pack. Dan Housen looks great to me. Hook, <laughs> yeah. He's so toyetic. And again, Jazzwares does a great job with people with not having a real face. I'm about so to say like, with face paint. Yep. Yeah. Face paint masks. Uh, Jazzwares does a great job. Hook, however, to me, looks like a dragon ball Z character, which is what I think he's going for anyway. But like this looks like I'm not trying to. But no, I, I know what you're saying. It. But <laughs> I, but yeah, that, I think that's what Hook is trying to do. Is trying to look like a Dragon Ball Z character. Um, but yeah, they don't do their faces are not realistic. Looking, yeah, usually. Uh, Daniel Bryan and uh, John Moxley, um, they are a, two, a tag team two pack as well. Um, doesn't look like it comes with much for accessories except for hands and microphones. Um, that is also available on Amazon. Uh, and then we got an LJN CM Punk or LJN style CM Punk. This is from Unmatched uh, Series 7. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Thunder Rosa in two different. Uh, so she'll have another chase, it looks like. Um, and then yeah, make me chase another chase. Yeah. <laughs> another <laughs> Penta, another Ray Phoenix. Uh, I'm Pac. good with their ultimate or their supremes. I think I'm good after. after yeah, that. I agree with you. And another hook, or a single release hook, which looks just like the other one, <laughs> um, just different paint. Uh, Dan Housen is a chase. Um, that is Unrivaled Collection 13. Um, this is him without a cape. It's with like that coat thing that he wears. Mm-hmm. Um, that will be. Uh... Oh, and then there is one with a cape. So there's two. Um, another sting, which I'm sure you'll be all about. Uh, 
Is it with that new Sting jacket? Like, I am going to get that jacket that he wears nope, now. Another jacket with a white scorpion and a baseball bat on it. Ah, okay. All the other things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Butcher and the Blade um, are on there. Uh, the Bunny. Um, and I think that that's like a couple of years too late, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, those guys aren't even on TV anymore. <laughs> I feel like. Um, and then we got uh, now. I think we got some fire here with Series 14. Max Caster, Anthony Bowens, Billy Gunn. Uh, Tony Storm with the new women's title, Ricky Starks, and Swerve Strickland and Keith That's Lee. Pretty good. That's a pretty good lineup. The Keith minus, Lee head minus the Keith Lee. <laughs> yeah, the Keith Lee, Keith Lee head looks terrible too. I know it's just the um, the like render, but that's series fourteen of Unrivaled, and then we've got series nine of Unmatched. Jeff Hardy, Claudio. This is where it gets a little interesting because there's some Ring of Honor titles um being yeah. thrown in here uh wheeler yuda john moxley with a blackpool combat club hoodie and the AEW title daniel bryan in his plain white t-shirt jamie hater with the women's title and alex reynolds just kind of thrown in there uh <laughs> <laughs> alex reynolds unrivaled 15 is ethan page uh dan daniel garcia uh and that was it for pictures there um, then we got uh series 10 of unmatched your girl Britt Baker getting the LJN treatment, of course. Uh, Adam Cole, baby, Kyle O'Reilly, Kenny is Omega. Like, is it like the size of a classic GI Joe? <laughs> <laughs> Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, and the figure we've all been waiting for, Brandon Cutler. Yes, um, which I feel like that Brandon Cutler was announced like years ago. But um, what else we got here? Oh, that's just a Jeff Hardy scan. Uh, Jade got a uh, shop AEW exclusive that actually went on sale uh, this past week. Uh, fi- I almost grabbed it just to try to flip it 50 bucks. So and I was like, eh, I'm good. Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah, because I, I think a Jade figure would be cool for my look. Because I do keep a women's wrestler shelf. Yep. Um, But. I'm not paying fifty dollars for, her. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had to pay extra for the case, which is crazy. Yeah, I'll uh, wait. Jericho is getting a uh, Walmart exclusive. Uh, uh, we'll see how that sells. Uh, Unrivaled collection. We're getting a Sammy Guevara with uh, both TNT with two different t- TNT titles. Oh yeah, that's um, when he beat. Uh, if it was like uh, Scorpio Sky had yep. a, had another. Which I'm like, where's my Scorpio Sky with the Laker color? TNC yeah. title. <laughs> like that's that's what I was waiting for. Wheeler Yuta is getting the uh ringside exclusive blood and guts treatment. Um, which there's a lot of blood on this figure. Um <laughs> but uh I like I I still say, man, I like that blood and guts collection. I feel like that's one of the best um one of the best collections that uh AEW has done and Jazzwares has done because it's just so uh so niche but at the mm-hmm. same time it's like something that needed to be done i think no because so. like you said like i'm waiting for that uh fourth of july sale and i'm gonna get the thunder rosa lights out figure yeah yeah lights out match figure so yeah yeah it works we're getting a ringside exclusive hook um it comes with a hoodie different hands chips the belt the uh ftw belt and a backpack um and some hook exclusive packaging looks pretty cool um, another Dan Housen. This is going to be a ringside exclusive. Um, he's got like these gray pants on, three different heads, a cape. Looks like a soft goods cape. Um, this is very nice, very evil on the back, and a Dan Housen box. Um, pretty cool looking. Um, doesn't come with a ton of accessories, but they're spending a lot of money. Uh, oh my God, somebody in the comments here says, dude has more figures than TV matches. <laughs> hey. Uh, hey. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I see no lies. Uh, and then Unrivaled Series 15 gives us Samoa Joe. Uh, I'll, a, I'll take a Samoa Joe. Ethan Page, Chris Jericho, Daniel Garcia, Soraya, and MJF with the devil mask. Ooh, uh, I think is, I might have to go for that. I think a cool touch. And then uh, last one, Unrivaled Series 16. It is Orange Cassidy, Matt Hardy, uh, Julia Hart, Austin Gunn, Colton Gunn, and... 
who is this? I don't know who this is. Uh, and oh, uh, uh, I don't know how to say. It. I'm gonna mess up his name. To uh, Kishida, mm-hmm. uh, one of the guys from New Japan. Um, right. I probably just slaughtered his name, and Zach's gonna let me hear about it. But um, so it's good to see some new AEW figures out there. It's been a little while uh, since we've seen it, and uh, looks there was a little teaser of them doing some Ring of Honor uh figures which some of these showed some ring of honor belts right but uh claudio, yeah claudio, claudio has to have the, have uh, uh wheeler yuda has one of them um so we could be seeing some ring of honor figures down the pipeline power town figures are shipping uh the major brothers got them um in their hands Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm sure you've seen the videos and the pictures and stuff. Any FOMO on these? You feel like you missed out by not ordering these? No. Same. Um, no. They're not. I mean, the 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 first wave is such a a random, obviously a random. I know you want to carry Von Eric, mm-hmm. um, which actually carry Von Eric is coming later than all the others. Um, but Magnum, Vern, Luthez, and Bruiser Brody are are shipping soon. Mm-hmm. Um, the only one that I really kind of wish I maybe have gotten, um, and maybe will if I can find them cheap, is Bruiser Brody. But um, no, no real FOMO here, right? Uh, so no, you weren't a Magnum TA fan in the in the day. Uh, yes and no, but I feel like we got a Mattel of him, and I don't. We did. Yeah. Like I think that's good enough for me to be honest with you. All right. So, uh, you've got some hot toy news here, bro. I do. So, uh. So those of you that seen the Flash uh, movie trailer, uh, you'll see that, you know, so he, you, you've seen the trailer. Flash is going to jump and jump dimensions here. And so the dimension that has Ben Affleck as Batman, like it has a new hot toy. And if you've seen the the trailer, like it's the blue, like, you know, it's got some blue in the in the coloring. Um, so you get, you can get, so they have that figure with the bat cycle or, and without, when I was looking on the, now to see the pictures of this, unfortunately you're, you can't go like (laughs) sideshow. I don't know. I I saw a picture, a a picture of it on Instagram before I saw it on sideshow and sideshow for whatever reason doesn't have a picture, but yet you can go on (laughs) like right now you can go on (laughs) Instagram and see it. Um, and also for the new Spider-Man movie coming out, the I think who's going to be the villain, Spider-Man 20, 2099, um, also has a hot toy. All right. Still not going to get me to buy them. Not yet. Anyway, though, Batman 89 is tempting. But... I'm about to say that 89. Nah, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think that was in the wheelhouse for you. Did you uh, did you watch the Ted Lasso final episode? I haven't brought myself to watch it yet. All right. All right. Then we're not going to talk about it because I don't want to spoil anything for you. I don't want to spoil anything for anybody out there. Maybe we'll talk about it next week. Yeah, but... I will watch it by next week, but uh, I, I couldn't do it yet. I was yeah. like, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> it took, I'm not it ready. took me some time, man. And like came home from Little League last night, turned it on, and I was just like, I don't know if I want to watch this yet. Part of me was like, I almost turned it off like five minutes in just because i didn't want to watch it right it's just like so torn but um i hate that the show's over man man i hate it uh i figured you'd want to talk about this celtics <laughs> Dude, well i don't, I don't know how ahead. they lose after the way they won game six mm-hmm. how do you lose like that in game seven at home like i just ah. no nope. i think so there's a couple of things at hand here so first you have to give it up to the heat like they (laughs) they um they just have they they're they're all they they got that dog and i'm like they're not that good though that's the thing it doesn't matter so you're not seeing like with basketball probably hockey too when a team when you have a bunch of guys that just have that like like i don't know how you say it in hockey but you have that dog no yeah that translates Okay. okay so the problem with the Celtics is that so a I think um, everybody thinks Brown is a little bit better than he really is. Like that's one of the yeah. That's issues. been uh, one of the big talks on the uh, on the ra- on the radio this week mm-hmm. or since you know since they lost Jaylen, Monday. Yeah, Jalen Brown is not as good as what we like. The, he's perceived the rise and fall of Jalen Brown. Okay, um, you have you know Michael Jordan's illegitimate child uh, Jimmy Butler. 
Um, I don't care what anybody says. That is the one. Yeah, you said that last week. That's why I'm telling you, and I'm going to keep saying it. Like, that is Michael Jordan's child. (laughs) Just look at him. Just look at him. That is Michael Jordan's child. His only weakness is that he has to jump off of two feet. That's it. That's his only weakness. Everything else he does very well. <laughs> um, and but yeah, that's all that happened. Like, and then you have a, a coach. I think I think it would have been better for you guys to, if you were going to fire Adoka um, to have a veteran coach. Yeah, um, he got out coached. Is the other thing. Uh, Spolstra is a excellent coach. Um, and it was like just X's and O's. He was better. Um, it did not help you that uh, that your main guy twisted an ankle 15 seconds into the game. Right. That didn't help at all. Um, I will acknowledge that. Um, but, yeah, but we had seven games here. You know, like, as, as I guess it's probably what they're also saying in, on Boston Radio. is like, you know, okay, we can make all the excuses we want to in game seven, but we had seven games to, yeah. to get this done against an eight seed. So, yeah. So that's probably what the main is that like the main talk. <laughs> yeah, it's just like yeah, it's that. It's like what went wrong. What 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 should they do now? Um, I do think they give sh- Jalen Brown a, a max deal. Yeah, do I don't do that. Part of me says yes, give him a max deal. Part of me says no. It's like if you don't give him a max deal, who are you going to replace him with? You but can it, for what he's doing. You can find players. Yeah, that's I'll true. That. That's true. Um, his the coach's name is. Uh, I cannot think of the Celtics coach's name right now, but um, I like I think keep him um because they've talked you know, he, about he learned some stuff like he 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 got you know that's first how it happens coach. sometimes first year coach yeah. man yeah so that's how it happens uh, sometimes exactly um so keep him around I think uh, Darvin Ham for us but this was his first year as a yeah. head coach Go I, I would say that's pretty decent for for <laughs> your first year being a head coach yeah so um. He's a local guy too. He's from Rhode Island. So like oh, I say keep him around. But it was I just like, that. man, after you come back, after you win it in game <laughs> six with three seconds left, and then you fucking do that, man. Ugh. Ugh. Well, just to but they tell you that bag. I know the pain. Like, so if you remember the Derek Fisher mm. shot, right? That what point four seconds or whatever it was. Yep. Just think the Lakers didn't win the championship that year. So That's I know true. the feeling. <laughs> I know the feeling that you very are true. Very true. But uh that brings us to weekly purchases. Anything in your uh I know you're getting ready for another big move here. Mm-hmm. Uh so you know you might have had the wallet strapped a little bit, but uh any anything to of note? You know, nothing of like well, Phil's book um yep. also came from me. Um you know, and I appreciate, I highly appreciate it. And, and um, you know, it's just a work so of good, labor of love there for, for Phil. And I'm happy for him. Um, and then I got some, some things for, you know, to give at, you know, to give stuff for graduation Yep, coming up on Saturday. Um, and now, and then, uh, and I'll wait for the, you know, there's a, you know, down the line, there's a package coming from, from that you were able to help me with. Yep. Yep. So, yeah. So yeah, after that, I kind of, I needed to, <laughs> I need to make sure I had the money for this move here. I hear you. I hear yep. you. Uh, so I got a, so I got a rental truck and, <laughs> and I got a, uh, a moving company. Nothing for my, exciting. For my- <laughs> 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 nothing exciting, but that's all right. Hey man, it happens. I got, yes. uh, let's see here. I got, I mentioned it last week. I obviously got Phil's book. We talked about that. Mm-hmm. Um, I got the Andre the Giant uh, Ultimate Edition from mm-hmm. Wrestling Collector Shop. That came while I was gone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm very happy with it. Um, a lot of people complaining about the non cloth uh, or non soft goods uh, singlet. I got mm-hmm. no complaints, man. I, um, I think this figure is very, very good. I opened it up yesterday. Should have done an unboxing because that's how much I enjoyed it. Uh, not enjoyed opening it, but enjoy the figure. It looks perfect. Three different heads. Um, there's not a whole lot to complain about with it. Um, I thought the shirt was kind of random, but they needed to throw something in with it, I guess. Um, so I, re- I do remember that Andre shirt though. Oh yeah. Homage has it. Right. Uh, no. and then people complaining about the soft good thing. It's like, wait, so you want like, so 
first off, there aren't that many figures with a singlet soft good. Right. Okay. People's Andre's, argument, I think, is that it's uh, because it's an ultimate and you're paying that extra. It's like, why not put a cloth singlet? Especially if you're giving us the shirt. Mm -hmm. So, like, I kind of see people's arguments. And I see – the only thing I see it being an issue – is with like figure photography where if you turn them some one way the mm -hmm. the top gonna part shine. is gonna yeah. no the top part is gonna like move and it's gonna look weird it's gonna mm -hmm. be like off centered it's gonna look like a glitched video game mm -hmm. um but other than that man if you're just posing it it's fine right yeah because i i just because that was my thing is that soft goods singlets the way that they look like it's like it's not gonna his singlet fit him right it was all the way on him so yep. it's like that would be difficult to make where like you know hundreds and thousands of singlets that have to fit this figure right so i'm like the the time and the energy it would have had to take to make a soft goods andre the giant singlet i just think I, I'm I'm gonna have to go with Mattel on this one. I, I don't think that <laughs> like the the uh, the balance there did, didn't go with that. Yep. Um, and then I also got from Wrestling Collector Shop. I got uh, Harley Race from the Greatest Hits line and the uh, Shawn Michaels from the Greatest Hits line. Shawn Michaels, I just kind of threw in there uh, because these are both figures I already had. Um, but the Shawn Michaels I threw in for like free shipping or something. I forget why I threw that in, but it was it. it, it I got some kind of benefit out of uh, adding it. But uh, I also wanted to talk about I got this last week uh, real quick. It is the Hall of Fame uh, induction ceremony from 2008 when Ric Flair got inducted. Oh, nice. That John James gave me. I finally opened this up. Very cool little like just like a little thing about each uh, nominee. Yeah. For, uh, each entry. So it's Ric Flair, uh, Eddie Graham. Rocky Johnson, May Young, uh, Jack and Gerald Briscoe, and Peter Maivia. That was and actually that was a good night. <laughs> and, oh, and Gordon Soley. Wow. Yeah, that was a good. I, I didn't realize he had uh -oh. such a good class there. Yeah, I didn't either. So, and then there's a whole list of uh, inductees at the end. So, uh, very cool piece. So, thanks to John James for that. Yeah, um, the the class. It's gonna go with all my Ric Flair stuff. Um, and then that's it, man. So just kind of going back to that Harley race figure, mm -hmm. that's another figure that I sold for I over a hundred dollars, maybe that. even $200. I don't remember was, the exact you got price. A chunk for, but, for that. I remember that one. Yeah. It paid for dinner at Disney. I don't know that much. <laughs> uh, so that, and then to be able to buy it back for less than, you know, retail through wrestling collector shop was, mm -hmm. uh, was pretty awesome. So. Yeah. Uh, same with the Shawn Michaels. I know I sold that Shawn because it's like WrestleMania 14 Shawn Michaels, which was in mm -hmm. Boston. Um, and that is that's a pretty uh that figures a pretty penny right now to or was a pretty penny as well. So um, but that's it for weekly purchases for me. And that brings us to what you're watching. As I talked about, I talked about uh Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. Man, I did not get to watch Dark Side of the Ring. I might watch it later today. I did not get to watch the 30 for 30 of the American gladiators, which I wanted to watch, uh, just so busy with the holiday weekend and being away. Uh, my Ted Lasso NHL playoffs, NBA playoffs. That's really it. Kids baseball. That's it. That's all I really got to watch. <laughs> <laughs> baseball and baseball, baseball and baseball, <laughs> baseball, 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 hockey, and a little bit of basketball. But right. how about you, man? All right. So I did get to see uh, that Tammy Lynn, uh, dark side. Yep. Um, I I just think when they do the lineups for Dark Side, I think they should kind of do it like a wrestling event. Like have like one of your your most interesting ones be first and last, right? Your first one and your last one, I think, should be the most interesting. I think this one it probably could have been in the middle, um, but at least it's a good like you know it's hey the new season has started, right? So we like the show that at least you got that right <laughs> but i i didn't think like this story chris candido i do like you did feel for um by the end of it um but i i, I don't know like i don't know if this would was the most like maybe they're doing the whole thing where okay this is the opener and then it's gonna get more interesting as you go yeah um i i watched so the 30 for 30 american gladiators um so two parts um the and last night the second part came on uh but if you have espn plus you can just watch them mm -hmm. 
Um, and yeah, they like a lot of stuff that you don't realize. Like it, it it's not going to go the way you think it is. Put it that way. Um, uh, it's a bit like, and as 30 for thirties are like you, you get a little bit more than you bargain for with their, that's what I like about that, their series there. And it doesn't disappoint. Like you will, like, it gets weird. You're like, wait, what? You know? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah. So the walk, I, especially wrestling fans, like you should watch it. I cannot wait. I will probably watch it tonight when I get home from trivia. Uh, one thing I wanted to circle back with you on, uh, mm-hmm. you got You got a pick for the NBA finals. You're going nuggets or heat. Oh yeah, this is a tough. Actually, this is a very tough matchup. Like it's tougher than what it looks like. Um, what people have to realize about the Heat is that they were injured for most of the year. In fact, some of their guys are still injured that were like starters. Okay, and you know Victor Oladipo and all that. Like they, they, uh, there's a few guys that like it's a like this team just. Because of pure fight, they are in the NBA Finals. Um, and then you have the Nuggets, who have just been the number one team all year. Like, whether you <laughs> recognize them or not, because they don't really get on TV. But uh, Joker is a damn good basketball player, and they are they have been the number one team. So I just kind of, like, after watching both series, like, I, I don't know how the Heat win this. Like, you know, it's it's hard to to go against it. Like has as good as Jimmy Butler has been, it's just hard to go it's hard to go against them. But I I just like the Nuggets are just they they just look too good right now. I'm going Nuggets just out of spite. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, man. Same reason I'm going for Vegas. Florida beat. The uh, Bruins. I saw that freaking foul NHL. on the Vegas that happened to the Vegas guy, like, where, where the guy shoved his uh, oh, his he c- cross-checked him in the face. Yeah, while he's on the ground. Yeah, or on the ice. Not cool. <laughs> and then they're rallying around it, like, <laughs> like wait, so you guys are rallying around the guy who did something completely wrong? Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, same for the NHL, man. I'm going, so I'm going Denver for NBA, but. I don't see any like Florida is so hot right now in the NHL. Mm -hmm. Um, They beat the best team ever in the Bruins. I'm not saying that because I love them. I'm saying they literally set records and made themselves, yeah, yeah, (laughs) made themselves the best team ever. Um, And they're just playing at such a high level right now, man. It's, it's hard to pick against Florida, but I'm going, I want Vegas to win. But just because I love the city of Vegas, I'm going, (laughs) (laughs) but. All right, guys, that is it for this week's episode, man. Uh, Make sure you check us out. We got some friends we want you to check out, including the Fig Cave. Uh, Grab that book if you haven't already off of Amazon. Uh, Conversations with Kenny over at the Call Up, Gorilla Brand Podcast, Pro Wrestling Podcast, all of our sponsors, Wrestling Collection Shop, Homage, uh, JJ uh, Figures, uh, they're on Whatnot, and they're uh, over at JJFigures.com. Seat Geek, Barrios, Toys, um, and you guys can follow us over at runninpod.com. Everything you need is there, including our YouTube, youtube.com slash the running podcast, Twitter at running podcast, Instagram is at the run in pod. Any big plans for the weekend, DJ? Just getting ready uh, for that. Oh, graduation. never mind. Graduation. I'm an idiot. <laughs> I'm, a, no yeah, I'm an idiot. Well, tell MJ congratulations. Oh, yeah. The sky's the limit. She's going to do big things in the world of wrestling, um, with her uh, designing gear and all that stuff. Um, but yeah, uh, it's my birthday on Sunday, the big four one man. So, uh, what we're doing, we have this may shock everybody, but we've got baseball, um, on Sunday, but it's down New Haven, so we might grab some pizza or something. I don't know, but uh, this has been episode 137 of the Run In Podcast. My name's Tommy Paradise, it's your boy DJ, and uh, we'll be back at you next week with episode 100. And 38. Peace.